So American Airlines is a major operator of Boeing 787. They operate a total of 59 of them. More specifically, 37 of the 7878 and 22 of the 7879 variants. But American Airlines doesn't have any of the Boeing 78710, the largest variant of the 787 family of aircraft. It hasn't even placed any orders for the type. Actually, it hasn't even expressed interest on the 78710. And so that makes me wonder, could American Airlines eventually decide to order the Boeing 78710? My answer is yes, but not yet. And so that's what I want to talk about in this video. I will analyze American Airlines' current fleet and explain my reasoning as to why there may be a possibility for American Airlines to order the Boeing 78710 in the future, possibly within the next 10 years, and some possible routes where American Airlines could possibly fly the Boeing 78710. The Boeing 78710 is the largest variant of the Boeing 787 family of aircraft. And while it hasn't been the most popular 787 variant, multiple airlines operate the type including United Airlines, British Airways, and Etihad Airways, while other airlines have recently placed new orders for the type, including Qantas and Air Canada. Most of these airlines use the 7710 on either short-haul flights such as East Asian routes on Singapore Airlines, as well as transatlantic operations on British Airways, United, and KLM. Although it's also used to fly on routes such as East Asia to Australia, the US West Coast to East Asia, and the Middle East to Europe as well. And so, if American Airlines ever decided to order the Boeing 78710, it would sort of operate similar types of routes, including some major transatlantic operations, as well as flights to South America, and maybe even some domestic flights. I'll explain some of that later, but first I would like to analyze American Airlines' current fleet to see how the 78710 would fit American Airlines' operations. American Airlines' current fleet consists of around 826 narrow-body aircraft as of November 2023, plus another 136 narrow-bodies on order, including 50 of the Airbus A321XLRs. American also has about 126 wide-body aircraft, including 37 Boeing 7878s, 22 Boeing 7879s, 47 Boeing 777-200ER, and 20 Boeing 777-300ERs, as well as another 30 Boeing 7879s on order that are expected to be delivered from 2024. That's 126 wide bodies plus 30 Boeing 7879s that would bring the total aircraft to 156. However, the 777-200ERs are starting to get quite old since they have an average age of 23 years. The oldest of these aircraft are 25 years of age and they're nearing their retirement age. And it's been speculated that the 7879 that American has on order will replace some of these 777s. But I personally don't believe that's the case. You see, American has shrunk their long-haul fleet drastically with the retirement of the 757, the 767, and the Airbus A330. Now, many of the routes that these aircraft used to fly have either been terminated or are now flown by the 787 and 777-200s. Technically, American has replaced their remaining 767s with the 7878s that have arrived since 2020. The 757 replacement is going to be the Airbus A321 XLRs that will arrive in 2024. The A330s didn't have a true replacement, but that gap has been sort of filled by some 787s and 777s, so that counts. But American's existing wide-body fleet is still below 2019 levels. So the Boeing 7879s that are going to begin arriving next year will hopefully bring the wide-body fleet totals to 2019 levels. And if America keeps growing their international presence like they are now, they're going to need a lot more wide-bodies than the 126 they have now. I should also say America's international network now looks a lot different than it did back in 2019. Because of the pandemic, Americans shrunk much of their Asian network and nowadays it's only a fraction of what it used to be, and mostly based around DFW. American also terminated multiple European seasonal destinations, but also added a couple of new destinations such as Doha, Delhi, and Tel Aviv as well as new routes that will begin next year in 2024. So even though the airlines network has shrunk, it is on a path to recovery, and it's growing once more thanks to the Boeing 7878s that have arrived since 2020. 
the 77 nines that will arrive in 2024 will help American grow even further. So if American wants to keep growing their fleet and network, well, then they cannot retire the Boeing 777-200s. And the best part of it all is that they don't have to, at least not yet. Not for maybe another 10 years. But eventually, this aircraft will have to be retired and replaced. And in my opinion, the best replacement aircraft would probably be the Boeing 787-10. And since American doesn't have to retire the 777s for another 10 years, well, they also don't have to place another wide-body order for another 5 or 10 years. Before then, American's growth will be largely focused on the new Boeing 787-9s that will be arriving in the coming years, but also the A321 XLR. Anyway, the main reason American could possibly buy the Boeing 787-10, as I mentioned before, would be to replace the aging fleet of Boeing 777-200ERs. The 787-10 has a similar capacity to the 777-200, and it could possibly act as a middle ground between the 787-9 and the 777-300ER, when it comes to capacity at least. The 777-200's capacity is of about 273 passengers, so I would assume that the 787-10 capacity capacity would be sort of similar, although that would depend on the seat configuration. But the 787-10 doesn't have the range of the 777-200. The 777-200 has a range of 13,080 kilometers, while the 787-10's range is about 11,910 kilometers, about a 1,170 kilometer difference which is a massive downside because it makes it difficult for the aircraft to fly some of the longer trans-Pacific flights to Asia and Australia. But if American orders this aircraft, I find it highly unlikely that American would fly it on ultra-long-haul trans-Pacific flights, but rather on transatlantic flights to Europe and flights to South America that are much shorter in length. But that is not a problem because most of the routes that the 777-200 currently flies are within the range of the 787-10 which are American's strongest international markets anyway. While trans-Pacific flights can be flown on the 777-300ER on the busiest routes and the 787-9 on the less busy ones. So in more specific details, some of the markets that the 787-10 would likely end up flying for American could include mostly routes that the current 777-200 already flies, as I mentioned before. Some examples of this are American's operations from London Heathrow to the US, which are currently flown on the 777-200, as well as flights from London to Philadelphia and Chicago, which are flown on the 787-9, but could be upgraded to a 787-10 if American wants to increase capacity on these routes, while the busier flights to New York, Los Angeles, Dallas, and Miami can remain on the 777-300ER. American would also base this aircraft in New York, where most of American's long-haul routes to Europe and South America are already flown on the 777-200ER. American would also base this aircraft out of their busiest hubs in Dallas, Charlotte, and Miami, where American could possibly fly transatlantic routes such as Charlotte to Paris, Frankfurt and Madrid, or Dallas to Paris, Dublin, Madrid, and Rome, and winter flights from Miami to Madrid, Paris, and Barcelona. Besides the transatlantic flights, American could also fly these aircraft between Dallas and Hawaii, as well as the very busy flights from Miami to Buenos Aires, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and Santiago, and Dallas to Sao Paulo and Buenos Aires. The 787-10 could possibly also fly on domestic routes, including for example Miami to New York, Los Angeles, and Dallas, where the 777-200 frequently flies, but possibly also routes like Miami to Charlotte and Chicago, Dallas to Los Angeles and Charlotte, maybe even transcontinental routes like New York and Philadelphia to Los Angeles. Now, not all 777-200 routes would be replaced by the 787-10. Some would likely be downgraded to a 787-9, especially routes where the load factors may be lower, as well as trans-Pacific routes where the 777-200 currently flies or has flown before. This could include some of the European flights from Charlotte that were previously operated by the A330, such as Dublin, Munich, and Barcelona as well as routes operated by the 7879 during the high demand summer season that could be flown on the Dash 9 during the winter and vice versa. Now I know I talked about the Boeing 787-10 as a replacement for the 777-200ER, but how about the Boeing 777-300ER? Some would argue that since the 787-9 is replacing the 777-200, then the 787-10 would replace the 777-300ER, but I don't believe it's as simple as that. 
and I don't believe it's really a good replacement for it. The best options for retiring the 777-300ER would probably be the Boeing 777-9 this Airbus A350-1000. I do see a problem with these two aircraft though in that the 777-9 might be too big for American, but the similarity to this 777-300 might make it a much easier aircraft to introduce. And there's also the A350-1000 whose capacity might be more appropriate as a 777-300 replacement, but it might be complicated and expensive to introduce due to it being a very different aircraft type to the 777 and the 787. But besides these differences, the advantage these two aircraft have is that they both have the capacity and the range to replace the 777-300ER. And I mean, you could argue that if the 787-9 can replace the 777-200, then the 787-10 can replace the 777-300. However, the 787-10 doesn't have the range nor the capacity to replace a type, especially when it comes to busy long-haul routes such as New York to Delhi, Los Angeles to Sydney, but also when it comes to extremely congested airports like New York JFK or London Heathrow where the 777-300 has multiple daily flights which are among the airline's most profitable flights, while it can also help on the busier flights from Miami to South America, Los Angeles to Sydney, Dallas to Asia, and a few domestic routes to connect between different American Airlines hubs, especially from Miami. But luckily, America doesn't have to think about this for quite some time because the 777-300ERs won't reach retirement age until the mid-2030s at the earliest. Right now, the average age of these aircraft is about 9 years old, and it's likely that America would keep them all the way until the late 2030s, so they won't need to think of a replacement for at least a decade. As I end this video, I would like to mention that everything that I mentioned in this video is pure speculation, so whatever I've mentioned here, please don't take it so seriously. I don't know whether American Airlines would ever order the Boeing 787-10. In my opinion, it is likely that they would place an order. Perhaps they could order about 40 or 50 of them. But depending on the circumstances, this could all change. They could instead order more 787-9s and keep their fleet rather simple or maybe split such order between the Dash 9 and the Dash 10. But do keep in mind that American still has orders for the 787-9 and the A321XLR to be fulfilled. And it's not time for American to place another order. So at the very least, we're going to have to wait at least a few years to see whatever future plans they may have. Keep in mind also that I'm not an expert, so anything that I've said on here comes from a non-professional opinion. And I probably said many things wrong and I probably don't know the situation that well. Either way, it was fun to analyze the situation and speculate about the future wide-body fleet of American Airlines and I cannot wait to see whatever plans they may have in the coming years regarding their fleet strategy and their future route network as well. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you all got any questions, comments, or any feedback, you all can leave a comment. I also got an Instagram that you all can follow. I post some cool stories and pictures over there so go ahead and check it out. Anyway, that's all I gotta say and I'll see y'all later.